So I have to leave for work in like 15 minutes or so, but of course that's when my Cisco 2911 router arrives. So I'm going to go more into detail on why I got this and I'm going to be unboxing a few other components in this video. But basically all of this is going to go into my Cisco lab in my server rack so I can start experimenting with this kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I have to leave for work pretty soon. So I guess I'll continue the video when I get home. On second thought, I think I'm just going to pull everything out of the box for now. So in the back here, we have our power cord, which is always nice to have another one of these because I never have them when I need them, even though I should have like 300 of them. And I believe somewhere in here there's also a console cable for this. Yep. There it is, this is my first official Cisco console cable. And the uh, rack hardware. So like I said earlier, we have the rack mount hardware, it's always nice to have that. We have our console cable, which I don't actually have a computer that has this serial connector on it. Fun fact, I think my 1366 test PC does actually, but that's like a VM server, so I can't really use that that way. And then I have a uh, power cord, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this tape off or leave for work, whichever one comes first, and uh, continue the video from there. Alright, so I have about 30 seconds to go, but uh, I pulled it out of the bubble wrap. There is a ton of bubble wrap. I'll throw in a picture of that. Uh, you can see we have all of our uh, expansion slot covers. We actually have a uh, HWIC card there. I didn't know it was coming with that. That's pretty cool. I have no idea what that is, but I was going to throw a serial card in this one, and then I'll probably move that one over to that slot or maybe slot three. I'll make videos about all this stuff because you guys probably have no idea about Cisco equipment because um, I'm just learning about this stuff. So, uh, Other than that, we have our gig 0, 0, 0, 2, and 0, 1 up there, and then USB, and then we have our auxiliary, and we have our consoles, and then our other expansion slots. We also have our fans in there, and I'm going to pull the fan array out when I get home from work. and. I'm probably going to take this whole thing apart, clean it up, even though it's in pretty good shape. It is missing the faceplate. There is supposed to be a uh, cover on all of this stuff, but it said that in the listing, which is fine, and this is going to be in the back part of the rack anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Have our single power supply. I can throw two in there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a more in-depth look at this when I get home, but uh, yeah, pretty neat. So I just got back from work. And my USB to uh, normal console, or whatever, the RJ45 Cisco console thing arrived. So that's pretty neat. And I have an 1841 router that doesn't have the USB console on it. And if I get some older 2960s, which will probably happen, I can use that for that as well. My current 2960, which I'm going to show in a later or video or something like that, also has the USB console. So in this bubble wrap are two, they're called HWIC cards, and I'm going to set this on a tripod so I can unbox this or unwrap it while still holding the camera. As I unwrap this, I'll kind of go over what these are. So Cisco has those expansion slots that I went over earlier, and uh, those are up there on that router. And those are called HWIC or EHWIC, and that stands for, I think, High Speed WAN Interface Card, or yeah, something like that. And then the E stands for Enhanced, so yeah, that's what these are. So if I just carefully unwrap them here, I've almost got them out. There is one, there is two. So these have two serial connections on them, and I got two of them, for one for my 1841 and one for this one. And eventually I'll get a 1941 or maybe another one of these or something like that, but for now we only have the two. So you can see there are those two interfaces there, those each connect to another one of those on a router or some kind of network device that the ISP owns, it's like a CDS something or whatever, I don't know what it is. I also have the 
cables. I bought, I think, one or maybe two cables for that. I think I bought one cable just to connect between the two routers for now. And uh, that comes tomorrow. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and set those aside and we can start messing with the router. So here is the router. I'll go ahead and pull off the uh, stuff here for now. Uh, first thing I want to do with this, and I'll kind of pull it more into frame here, is move this card here. I'm not sure what this is, like I said. I'm probably going to move it into that slot, because right now I have the one serial card, and I want to put that in uh, there so it's S000 and S001. If you're Cisco people, you'll understand what I'm talking about if you're not. Um, basically, it has to do with the way the interfaces are connected to the system. So zero means on the motherboard, that's why gigabit 0, 0, 0, 001 and 0, 02 are zero slash whatever, because they're on the physical motherboard. And then those serial cards would be listed as serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 0 slash 1 if I put them in there. And that is uh, motherboard slash slot zero slash interface zero or one and this one would be zero one zero and this one would be whatever so you, you get the point probably so i'm no expert on this stuff but i think that's kind of how it works so i'm going to go ahead and uh unscrew this and i'm going to move it over one i think i'm just going to put it into the slot next to the card because I don't have any other cards that are going in here and that was my smoke alarm chirping. It's been doing that a lot more recently. So there's one card and that kind of captive screw is acting weird but uh, I'll also pull off this one. So that one just comes off with a one screw and I'll save this somewhere. I'll maybe take one of these covers off and throw a plastic bag with the components in there if I can. So uh, we can go ahead and pull this module out. And this is obviously some kind of RJ45 network interface card. And that's gonna go in there. Slides in nicely. And we'll go ahead and screw this in. Of course, the reason I'm building a Cisco lab is because I'm taking Cisco classes now. Uh, I would like to get my CCNA certification. There's also CCNP, which is next up from there, and CCIE, which is the highest level. And I would like to get all of those. Uh, that's gonna be a long time coming, and it's not really super practical for me, but it would still be very cool to get. Of course, certifications don't really mean anything. You actually have to have the ability to do stuff. So I think the other thing I'm going to do on camera before I kind of stop filming for a bit is install the rack ears. So if you can see those there, they uh, go on the side, obviously, and that allows the device to sit in the rack. So I have the 42U Dell rack that I got at the surplus store last year. That is downstairs. And for right now, I think all of this equipment is going to go in there. This is actually the first piece of my Cisco lab that like, I actually have because I still want to get four or three 2960 switches. I'm debating if I should get eight port or 24 ports because theoretically the eight ports would be fine because I doubt I'll ever need to connect more than however many that adds up to. So other than that, I'd like to get another router and find some way to rack mount my 1841 because that should have rack uh rack ear screws but it doesn't and uh yeah so it doesn't have rack mounts basically and i can't find a way to do it because it's just a weird model i guess and um yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and move around to the other side and install that one rack ear and then i guess I'll continue the video when I have something else to do with this. So if we go around to that side, there are four countersunk holes and then these obviously are where the screws for the rack go. So I'm going to put in the top one first. So yeah, that's, that's basically it. That's all you have to do to mount this in a rack. And there's 
holes on the uh, other kind of halves of it. And that is for the different kind of racks, or if you want to mount this the other way in a rack where the power cords and stuff are facing the front and the interfaces are on the back. Middle screw holes are for if you have like a two post rack where everything kind of balances. So I also mentioned I would pull out the fan array from the side here. There's also this little flap for a filter it looks like. I think that's what that's for at least. And there's the one power supply. So uh, this is the fan array. There are four fans. There's a 40 millimeter and then a bunch of 80 millimeters. And uh, this router is full of that uh, kind of dark dust. It's not like smoker's dust from computers or whatever. It's like a, that's not like a thick kind of what you'd find in like your friend's computer or whatever, you know? Kind of interesting. Um, I'm probably at some point going to pull this whole thing apart and clean it by the looks of this. But um, yeah. I haven't turned it on yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Here is the computer setup, and I'm ready to uh, enter the console on the router. Uh, it's also under there. Fans are revved on the MacBook for some reason. Let's go ahead and turn on the router. And hit that. And it looks like it's trying. So it looks like it can't connect. I'm gonna keep going here because maybe the router hasn't posted or whatever. Here we go. So it is loading iOS. Also, Cisco iOS and Apple iOS are different. iOS in this case is Internet Operating System, I think. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, not an iPhone, so, and it looks like it detected our two cards as well. I'm gonna look up what that card is there, um, but, so here we are at the, uh, initial thing, so I'm supposed to put no for that, that's what I've been told to do, so, yeah, it goes through some stuff. I'm gonna full screen this, I think. So it looks like it just had a thing, a list of things to go through, and if I hit enter, you can see our router with the carrot next to it, and that means we're in user config mode or something like that, and or user exec mode, I think it's called actually. And then, yeah, so I'm not going to go into the Cisco details here, there's plenty of that online, I'm sure, but uh, you can see here, everything seems to be working. So the last thing I ordered arrived, this is a serial cable. So this cable has two ends, there's DTE, which if I move that you can see there, and then there's also DCE, and DCE is the clock one and DTE isn't. Basically because it's serial you need like a clock signal and I believe the end of the cable determines which port it goes on, but I don't really know. So the way this works is I plug it into the serial port on each of them, and this would make the bottom router the clock, and then plug it in up there, which it's upside down, and this router doesn't have any like feet on the bottom or anything, so it slides around everywhere. But that plugs in there, and that allows the routers to interface between each other. So if I turn on the back router, so you can see we're letting the router boot up and the computer's right next to the router, so sorry if you can barely hear me. So I think now that we're in the console, if I plug in the serial, it should say that it came up. It might not because nothing has an IP address. So the reason it says changed state to down is because the other router isn't configured. And honestly, that doesn't really matter for this video. So it looks like everything works. Of course, I don't have rack rails for this, but other than that, things are going well. I would have configured this one in the last clip, but I can't really be bothered to figure out how to connect to it through the Mac terminal. It's kind of wacky that way. Anyway, uh, that's really everything. All the stuff is unboxed. This is the first kind of part of the Cisco lab. 
I still want to get one or two more routers, like I said, and three switches, and that would be like the recommended CCNA Cisco lab. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about all this stuff. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.